All right, here we go. Lesson 7.3, part one. So take a look at uh, page 202 in your journal. Uh, that's what we'll be going through on a few problems here. Uh, this one has a lot to do with just simply factoring and then eliminating common factors like you see right here. All right, so that's gonna be the goal today. So uh, just a couple quick reminders. You can only cross out things that are being multiplied together. So go, going very back to basics, if you're looking at this, um, if I break apart the 15 into 3 times 5, and I break apart this guy into 13 times 5, because this is multiplication, that's why I'm allowed to cancel these out. The same is going to be true with factors, right? This is 4 times x plus 3, and this is x plus 3 times x plus 3. So these, two com these are two common factors that can all be eliminated right there. And then you simply write down what we are left with. Uh, the one thing you cannot do is cancel things out if they are being added. So if I had x plus 3 over x plus 4, obviously those are not the same factors. Um, and because these two terms are being added together, I am not allowed to eliminate those x's right there. So that would be a no-no. So this is actually as simplified as it can get. So keep that in mind. Uh, so let me go to the next two pages here. So I'm jumping over to page 204. And this is where we're going to be going through a handful of examples on these guys. So it all starts with factoring. That's why on Monday uh, you had the lesson on just reviewing a factoring. So make sure that one gets taken care of because that's going to help you for today. So uh, remember our number one rule of factoring is to first look for a greatest common factor in every situation. So if I look at these guys on top, I can see that 2x squared can go into both terms. So I'm going to divide out my 2x squared. And that should leave us with x minus 4. On bottom, that guy cannot be simplified anymore. So that's what we have as we put that into simpler terms. Uh, but now as you look at what can be eliminated, as I look right here, I can see that my x squared and my x squared can cancel. So I'm going to divide those guys out. Also, 2 over 6 can be reduced. Right, 2 goes into here once, 2 goes into here three times, and so everything's been reduced. I simply need to write down what's left. Uh, so at this point, remember to keep everything on top on top, and anything that's on bottom needs to stay on bottom. So on top I have the 1, which you don't really have to write the 1 if there is something else to put there, but you can still write it. I'll put it just because it's there. Um, I also have an x minus 4 on top. On bottom, all I had left was the 3. So that guy needs to stay on bottom. And that would be it. And again, you don't need this one here because there's something else already there. So that would be okay. So let me jump down to number 3. And at any point, always a good thing to just simply pause my video give one a try ahead of me, and then replay the video and see if you did it right. So uh, as you look down at this one, remember that anytime you see one with three terms, we're looking to say what are two numbers that can multiply to be this, that can add to be this. So in this case, numbers that multiply to be 4, that would add to be negative 5. So it looks like x minus 1 and x minus 4 would work. And as I look at the bottom piece, what are numbers that can multiply to be 1 that could add to be negative 2? So if I did x minus 1 and x minus 1, that would work. And so as you look, now everything's been factored. All I have to do is look for a common factor that can be canceled. Uh, and in this case, I got the x minus 1s that can go. And you're only allowed to do like a, a one for one deal. So I can do one item on top with one item on bottom in order to cancel. And so this is what I am left with. So that would simply be my answer. So always important that you write what is left clearly as your answer. And that's what we got. So we're going to do one more here and then we'll do one more down below. And that's all we're going to be looking at for today. So uh, let me go to the one on top. Again, first rule of factoring, looking for a greatest common factor. Looks like we could take out x squared from both of those terms. 
and that would leave me with x plus 3. And remember, one way you can always check to make sure you did that right is if I were to distribute, would it give me back what I started with? And you can see that this would, so I know I am good to go. Moving on to the bottom, numbers that multiply to be negative 24, that would add to be negative 5. We would be looking at x plus 3 and x minus 8. And so here you go, we now have a common factor that can be canceled out. So those guys are gone. Um, don't forget on these guys that it is possible to run into some cases where nothing cancels. And if that's the case, everything you have would just be your answer. So if and one or two of those seem to come up somewhere along the line, either in our book or in a review, I remember. So just kind of keep a lookout for that. But if you do see a case where nothing canceled, it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that you factored wrong. It just means potentially that it was just one of those cases where it could not be reduced. Um, and so you could say it's irreducible uh, or you just simply keep what's whatever you have. Nothing would cancel. So in this case, uh, again, I would be left with the x squared on top and I'm left with an x minus 8 on bottom. And that would be our answer. Don't forget to keep anything that's on top must stay on top and anything that's on bottom has to stay on bottom in your answer. So let me do one more with you. This will be the last one for this video. If I have something like this that's being multiplied together, there's really two approaches that you could take on this. You are allowed to start canceling now, but that does get a little messy. So I would encourage you to multiply those together first. So I'm just going to multiply straight across the top. So 3xy times y would become 3xy squared. And as I multiply straight across the bottom, uh, let's see, so I still got the 2. Um, x times x becomes x squared. I also have a y squared. So I have a 2, I have an x squared, I have a y squared. Now it's best to look and see, okay, now what would cancel? Um, so in this case, my y's can go. So those guys are gone. Um, as far as the x's, uh, keep in mind, remember our rules of exponents, when you're dividing, the rule is to subtract. So 1 minus 2 would give me a negative 1. Um, and if it's negative, that means I need to put it on bottom to make it positive. So here's what we got when everything is said and done. That 3 must stay on top. That 2 must stay on bottom. But again, when I looked at the x's and I did 1 minus 2, because it's x to the negative first, which could be written this way, uh, remember we really don't like to leave negative exponents in our answer, uh, so the best way to deal with that is to move it to make it positive. So really we're going to take the x and move it down below in order to make its exponent positive. So this would be the better way to write the answer. And that's it for this first part. So in the second lesson, we'll be doing the uh, fun with division stuff. So we'll get to this next time.